an alien wasp, dinosaurs living in our time, a monkey with stylish whiskers, a gigantic poisonous toad, and much more. Smart Pizzas with you. In this episode, you'll see the most unusual animals found in Amazonia. Alien Wasp Wasps are already frightening creatures that only the bravest or most reckless person would want to mess with. Now, imagine that instead of the winged creatures we're used to, there are alien wasps, the ones that devour their enemies from the inside and look a hundred times more horrible. And yes, it's not a nightmare, it's real. Scientists have discovered just such creatures near the Amazon. The team found a female specimen and studied it in the laboratory. Specialists immediately noted the unusual appearance of the wasp. Because of its large head and bulging eyes, it resembles an alien creature. But what scares me much more is the fact that it's a parasite, and an extremely unusual and horrible one at that. The alien wasp lays an egg inside its victim, which as it develops kills the organism when it grows. These wasps pull such a cunning trick with the help of a special egg-laying organ that looks like a tube. They can even pierce the victim with their ovipositor and do not lay eggs but just immediately drink blood and saturate the body with necessary substances. Under attack by aliens with wings are constantly all other insects, that is beetles, spiders, or caterpillars. How long ago this species appeared? How dangerous is it to humans? Scientists have yet to find out. And what scientists have almost studied are the ancient faces carved in stone and found in the Amazon. When the water level in the famous river dropped a bit, the researchers had a unique opportunity to explore the previously inaccessible area. Muddy waters no longer impaired the view, so people quickly enough came across human faces carved more than 2,000 years ago. The first thing the group of experts thought was that it was the work of hmm. ancient people and almost finished studying the stones. Well, they found drawings from antiquity, and what next? But then at some point, one of the scientists came up with the idea to take DNA samples from this place and check who they may belong to. Let me put it this way. What came out of it shocked the entire scientific center, where the study was conducted. With the help of a supercomputer, scientists analyzed the samples taken from the river, and this is what they got. In theory, these drawings could have been made by creatures like these, human-like, yes, but obviously not us. What do you make of this finding? Could such monsters really have existed in ancient times? And if so, why didn't we find any traces of them before? Write in the comments. Oh, guys, I think I found something even cooler than those mysterious humanoids drawn by supercomputers. There's a whole herd of little dinosaurs grazing somewhere in the Amazon. You don't believe me? Then see for yourself. I bet a lot of you are now thinking that this is some kind of fake video, editing or something like that. But I assure you the video is real and the creatures on it are no less real. Of course, it's not a brontosaurus, but the most ordinary nasua, or more precisely, coati. This is an extremely intelligent animal, which has a multi-tool nose. With the aid of the latter, Kwati can talk with its relatives, express emotions, and open the passage to the place of interest, and even unmistakably find something tasty. Moreover, Nasui are able to adapt to almost any conditions, and the main factor that allows them to do this is a collective way of life. These fluffy animals live in packs of several to 50 individuals where they share duties and successfully continue the genus. The second thing that makes them more advanced than many other creatures is a proper diet. Yes, they're nutritionally conscious and don't eat just anything. Of course, they can feed on fruit for a while, but these modern dinosaurs prefer meat because it contains protein. Thus, together with protein, they get a charge of energy they need. And Coates have incredible agile limbs to such an extent that they should not jump trees or pick grass but show tricks to people. So what? This way they'd kill two birds with one stone. They would both earn money for meat and be under human protection. After all, despite all the dexterity and socialization, 
the Nasua remains a very small animal whose claws and teeth are absolutely insufficient to fight with real predators. And here's another creature that's even smaller than Coates. They're called pygmy marmosets. These species of primates seem quite unique. However, there are many representatives of them in the areas where they live. It's out of the question that they're on the brink of extinction. To give you an idea of how small these guys are, even a peanut would be the size of their entire hand. These Amazon primates live right along the river. You might think, how do they survive in such a dangerous place? A place full of the most terrible snakes, alien wasps, some poisonous insects, and so on. And I'll tell you, the secret is all in the same socialization. The pygmy marmosets are used to living in small families of three to ten individuals. Among them, there are a mother, a father, and offspring usually up to three years old. Sometimes the family is joined by a couple of adults who voluntarily assume a subordinate position. For most of the day, the family rests in the shade, socializes, and brushes each other's fur. This allows them to establish friendly relations, to rid their neighbors of parasites, and to fill their own belly with insects. However, it's unlikely that you'll be satisfied with fleas. Monkeys also understand this and skillfully collect fruit, insects, or tree sap. This is the kind of food that won't fight back at you, but at the same time will successfully satiate your body. But what helps them survive even more is their excellent ability to communicate. Pygmy marmosets have a range of sounds that they use in certain specific instances. For example, if they're being attacked, they'll make one sound. If someone has discovered a glut of yummies and plans to bring the family over, the hero of the day will make a different sound. And even if someone just wants to show the others something or tell them about their location, the sound will be different. In short, no matter what happens, they'll be able to alert the others in time and come up with a plan of action. And now for the guys. If you suddenly try to grow a mustache but you can't do it, please close your eyes for a couple of minutes because the Emperor Tamarin can bring you to tears. This primate has a great mustache. This creature was discovered at the beginning of the 20th century in 1907. It seems to me that it was after the discovery of this creature that the mustache fashion really began to seep into the masses. Like other members of the Calatricidae, the Emperor Tamarin is not brilliant in size. Its body is 12 inches long and it weighs 14 ounces, which aren't close to the imperial dimensions. However, the primates did not despair and quickly dragged their emperor higher on the branches of trees, inaccessible to larger monkeys. But even though they settled high up, their diet has not changed. They're still interested in fruits and vegetation, although they're not afraid to get their paws dirty with blood, frankly speaking. They can easily get their hands on someone's eggs, insects, or even small animals. And of course, in this case, the Emperor Tamarins do not attack one by one. They attack a whole horde of primates, or rather their whole family. One group usually counts from 10 to 20 individuals, settled on the territory of up to 50 hectares. All the same, the Emperor Tamarins kept this desire to be the most important and complete owners of their territory, according to the name. That's why they're jealous of its protection and do not tolerate outsiders. I don't know how to tell you what a scandal they can make over territory and uninvited guests, so you'll just have to take my word for it. No, I think you'll realize how mad they are about territory once you find out what goes on inside their family. Yeah, yeah, it's a regular mess too. It's not a male that heads a group, but the oldest female, with the strongest desire in the veins to warm all the other females and send away males. That's why after reaching adulthood, males are left out in the cold, whereas females stay and warm up. However, of course, not all males are kicked out. If that were the case, their society would die out. All but a few representatives of the weaker sex, as males are considered to belong to according to what females think, are driven away. They're needed as breadwinners and babysitters, as well as bearers of the family name. With the beginning of the mating season, the remaining males organize dancing with tamarins as they have to lie down with each female of the flock. Interestingly, those are old ladies that lie down first. Kinkajau 
So here we have another unique monster, a resident of the Amazon, which is an omnivorous mammal of the raccoon family. Its name is Kinkajau, but it's also known as a honey bear. Without a genetic analysis, it's simply impossible to understand its origin. Judge for yourself. It has a cute face, resembling the grace of a cat, and a grabbing tail and the agility of monkeys. Kinkajau also has a long tongue, just like ant eaters, and a great love for bee products. Turns out to be kind of a hybrid, which seems to have taken the best of five or six creatures, soaked it up and became an absolute. But don't worry, scientists have already conducted a genetic analysis, the necessary of which I spoke about earlier, and found out that the Kinkajau actually belongs to the raccoon or Prasonidae family. Despite this, the Kinkajau's behavior is a little strange. During the day, it likes lounging in the company of its relatives. They sleep in the family hollow, comb each other's fur, and try not to be an eyesore to large daytime predators. When the sun goes down, the family crawls out and goes in search of food. At all events, they haven't eaten anything all day. These omnivorous dodgers glide along tree branches even better than squirrels and monkeys because their paws can turn 180 degrees. Thanks to this skill, they're incredibly spectacular and quickly descend to the ground at first. Remember when I told you that they love honey? Well, this very agility, more than any other, helps it in their search for it. Due to their small size and pantophagy, one family clan can easily feed from a territory of 30 to 50 hectares, and its boundary is regularly marked by the largest or oldest member of the family. He does this in case their unwanted relatives are nearby. Let them know that the place is already occupied. I wish people could also learn to know unmistakably what animals live where. Sometimes you might meet a predator right in the middle of the forest and it's too late to leave. Or, well, not a predator, but some new bat, like fisherman bat, for example. It's also called the greater bulldog bat. While all normal bats hunt bugs or eat fruit, the fisherman bat, as you may have understood from the name, feeds on fish. To my surprise, it does this very well. The animal is equipped with powerful wings, capable of lifting the prey, weighing as much as the animal itself, as well as tenacious hooking claws, allowing it to grab its enemy and not let it go, even in spite of the slippery scales. And you know what? The fish diet works. Our bat has fattened up to 5.1 inches in length. But wait, while we're at the subject of appearance, why is this animal named the greater bulldog bat? Well, it's actually quite simple, just look at the muzzle of this animal. The only good thing is that it's incredibly difficult to find it during the day, just like almost any other bat. At this time, it hides in a shelter, somewhere in a cave or in a hollow, and waits for the night to go hunting. Once close to the water, during the night, this winged monster can catch up to three dozen fish, and that's because it sees with its ears, not its eyes. This animal uses echolocation to detect waves created by fish, carefully and almost without making sound, flies up to them and deliberately bites into the enemy. Almost always, it succeeds in doing so at the first time. But even if the fish turns out to be strong and drags the bat underwater, it's not a problem. The bat will cope with it, too. The fisherman bat is an excellent swimmer and is able to both breaststroke to the shore and take off from the surface right along with the prey. Cane Toad An animal with such an unusual name is considered the largest toad in the world. The length of its body is 10.5 inches and its weight reaches 5.5 pounds. These giants, in addition to shocking sizes, also possess a knobby, very thick skin, which is incredibly difficult to breathe through. Whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger, the cane toad follows this rule. So it is this thick skin that has developed its lungs to unbelievable proportions, even better than a lot of master swimmers. But you don't have to immediately imagine a toad swimming backstroke. Despite the large and powerful lungs, the cane toad practically doesn't swim and prefers the aquatic environment to the terrestrial. And while we're at it, in the course of evolution, these creatures have decided to abandon the webbing on the front legs. And really, why better navigate in space when you're already half poisonous and therefore no adequate predator would dare to approach you? 
There, see those swollen bumps next to their ears? That's where the poison is. It's also soaked into the skin and most of the internal organs in some places. This feature did not only keep them safe from unscheduled attacks by other creatures, but also put them in an advantageous position, making them the dominant species in their home territory. These toads have become the true pests, local snakes suffer the most of all. Let the snakes alone, everybody keeps away from them, even the strongest animals as well as humans. After all, their venom affects people to the full, causing arrhythmia and, as a result, complete cardiac arrest. In addition, their victims experience vomiting, excessive salivation, inflammation, paralysis, and temporary blindness. Now I'll tell you about new animal hybrids created this year. I think that the superhero topic is on everyone's mind. Even those who are not particularly fond of these movies or cartoons, somewhere deep down, really want to be like superheroes. After all, there's a reason even scientists come up with crazy hybrids between humans and different animals. For example, a hybrid between a human and a mouse. This project was created not so long ago and in a short period of time has already managed to achieve unprecedented success. No, no one has yet created a mouse-human. But in this period of time, scientists do not set themselves such goals. After all, if the creature is born, it will be necessary to take special care of it, and the researchers have no desire to spend their effort on it. They want to focus on studying the genomes and structures of new organisms, as well as learn all the pros and cons before allowing them to appear in the world. Thus, not a single human-mouse hybrid has ever been grown to adulthood. All embryos, including the most successful ones, are destroyed on day 17 of life, and even today's record-breaking 4% of human cells in the mouse body are just a reason for the personal pride of the researchers. The method itself is much more interesting. Scientists managed to calibrate human stem cells to achieve approximately the same growth rate as mouse cells. This allowed them to do mutual integration. The goal of this project is to obtain complete combined organs, as well as systems such as circulatory and respiratory. If this project is successful, people may find a solution to the problem of treating complex diseases related to organs. And if the idea of human-mouse hybrid fails, researchers will always have the option of crossbreeding a human with a pig. But why am I talking about the future? After all, the idea has already been realized. The unusual embryo contained no more than a thousandth of a percent of human cells. Besides, it was allowed to develop for only 28 days. But only 186 creatures out of 2,000 studied lived to this date. The researchers explained the inefficiency of this method by the fact that humans and pigs are still too far apart on the evolutionary ladder, and intrauterine development in different species takes place differently. In humans, it lasts nine months and in pigs it lasts less than four months. Nevertheless, the man-pig chimera is still being studied. Real Monster If you think that the human-pig chimera or the human-mouse chimera is the peak of outrage, you're definitely wrong. There are more mutants in nature than that. Some are even beyond human control. This picture shows a hybrid of a bull and a spider. According to the author of the picture, the creature is real. It lives on one of the farms in strict secrecy. It remains a mystery for what purpose it's grown, but there is clearly nothing good about it. Bulls aren't much use, let alone the ones crossed with spiders, these creepy and often venomous creatures. Narwhal and Beluga Against the background of those creatures we've seen earlier, there's a ray of hope that hybrid animals can still be appropriate and good. In the Arctic, scientists discovered a rather unusual skull that belonged to a hybrid of a narwhal and a beluga whale. Scientists suspected something wrong from the very first seconds of finding this skull, but only recently, through DNA analysis, did they confirm the crazy theory. The discovered skull lacked the horn characteristic for a narwhal, and in general it was quite different from the skulls of the two species. It was much larger than the usual representatives. Also, this individual fed at a much greater depth than its parents, which also interested scientists. In any case, only time will show what this hybrid turned out to be and what consequences it will entail. 
Dancing Dragon. That was the name given to a rather strange creature found by scientists. Why? You'll find out next. Researchers were studying the habitat of various ancient animals, watched the soil, and accidentally found the remains of a mysterious monster. Yes, there were many different creatures, including even dinosaurs, but this was unique in its kind. No one was going to jump to any conclusions about it, but the experts did make one assumption. In their opinion, this new species is a relative of Velociraptor and is a transitional step from dinosaur to the bird. During its lifetime, the individual was smaller than a modern crow and had four wing-like limbs and a very long tail with two large feathers. This combination, along with the position in which the remains were found, made the scientists name the creature the Dancing Dragon. In all likelihood, it was still a young creature, a one-year-old at most. But in that case, judging by the fact that during this time it had already managed to grow fully formed feathers, the plumage developed in these monsters on a completely different principle. For example, most modern birds do not acquire large tail feathers until puberty. The tail of the dragon is as long as the entire body of the dinosaur, and the feathers on it appeared only a few months after birth. Kunga. Of course, Mother Nature is not the only one that can create unique hybrid animals. Humans and their most ancient creations also claim to be creators. I'm talking about the Kunga, a hybrid donkey created several thousand years ago. Modern scientists have long known about these ancient animals from numerous clay tablets and lots of archaeological finds. But until recently, they couldn't understand what species they belonged to. The thing is that all the bones of the found ungulates were not similar in appearance to any living animal. As it turned out, congas are the first hybrid animals in the history of mankind. For their crossbreeding, people used ordinary domestic donkeys as well as wild Syrian onagers. Of course, no one can say for what purpose these hybrid animals were created, but most scientists are sure that they were a great substitute for ordinary donkeys the ones that were rather weak and timid. The hybrid animals were much more confident and had good physical strength. That's why one such beautiful creature sometimes cost as much as six ordinary donkeys. Besides, congas did not graze like other cattle. They were fed with specially prepared food. There were also sacrifices. The ungulates were buried together with noble owners. According to an ancient legend, this ritual helped a person who had gone to another world find a personal assistant even in the afterlife, someone that would protect them and help them in their hour of need. Okay, I get that hybrid animals can be different, but to cross a shark and a pig? Are you serious? This picture you're looking at is not photoshopped, no matter how much some of you want it to be. It's an actual shot of a shark pig caught by a fisherman. When the picture was shown to the public, rumors immediately began to swirl that it was some kind of mutant or the product of terrible military experiments on marine creatures. But as it was later confirmed, it was neither. People caught a common and at the same time very rare hybrid in no way related to military experiments. It's an angular rough shark, which in some languages is called a pig shark because of its unusual resemblance to a pig. Usually, this shark lives at depths of up to 2,300 feet. What's curious, the creature also made some incomprehensible grunts, <laughs> which suggested the idea of crossing with a real pig. But the researcher's data instantly refuted all this. The creature was studied and released back into the water, but personally, something still bothers me. It seems as if there cannot be such sharks in nature, and a person was involved in this anyway. What do you think? Hummingbird with Gold Scientists thought for a long time that this bird was a completely new species, and then it turned out that was not the case. It was just a rare hybrid. The cute creature was found during a nature study in Peru. It was then, without much study, that the wrong assumption was made. Soon, the data was transferred to the laboratory where the DNA of the bird was compared with other indicators. This revealed all the information, confirming that in front of the scientists was a very rare hummingbird with a golden throat. It's not just that the color makes it rare. According to its DNA, it's a feathered one that separated from the other birds and received its unique genetic background thousands of years ago. Such a complex chain of development has preserved in the new hybrid all the positive features of its descendants, 
while adding a cherry on top in the form of a throat of a different color. While its congeners have a pink throat, this feathered one has a golden one. Last year, an interesting video appeared on the internet. A scuba diver recorded a video of an encounter with an unusual transparent creature in the waters of Malta. The diver swam up to the fish, which at first is even difficult to be seen. Due to transparency, it seems almost invisible. The diver touched the incredible fish, examined it in detail, and then let it go. The video he posted was titled Ghost Fish. Although this creature does resemble a ghost in some ways, it actually has a different name. It's a cell. These creatures feed on phytoplankton, which they filter through the water. They look somewhat like jellyfish, but salps are much more complex organisms, related to fish and vertebrates. And they have a heart and gills and can reproduce sexually. Salps have a unique life cycle. They spend part of their lives alone and then clone themselves, forming chains and other forms of related organisms. Interestingly, some salps also synchronize their movements using electrical signals during communication. Glass Octopus It makes no sense for animals that live at very deep depths to turn invisible. There's simply no light coming in. Animals that live close to the surface of the ocean are able to reflect sunlight in such a way that a predator thinks it's the glare of the sun on the surface of the sea. But what about those that live somewhere in the middle? The glass octopus has the answer. This amazing sea creature is almost completely transparent, which allows it to hide in the open ocean where there's no sand, reefs, or rocks. Glass octopus lives at depths of 300 to 1,000 meters. This 45-centimeter long creature is virtually invisible to predators. Only eyes, optic nerves, and the digestive system of this creature can reveal camouflage. But the glass octopus has a solution to this problem as well. Its eyes are elongated. Although its eyes limit peripheral vision, they minimize the shadow they cast. This octopus is also able to rotate its body so that its shadow is as small as possible. So it's almost impossible to catch this invisible octopus. Glass Squid This mollusk relative of the glass octopus, the glass squid, also boasts a transparent appearance. These sea creatures are almost completely transparent, only their large eyes are visible. Unfortunately for the squid, this is not a good thing. Even at great depths, a predator will be able to see the shadow the squid's eyes cast. Apparently, the glass squid consulted with the glass octopus and learned the art of camouflaging from it. Like the transparent octopus, the glass squid is capable of hiding its eyes. The squid can do it using photophores, special organs under the eyes, which create a stream of light, much like the glare of sunlight in the water. An interesting fact, the family of glass squids has about 60 species, and all of them are almost completely transparent. However, the glass octopus is the only one of its kind, so the invisible squid brotherhood is numerically superior. But it doesn't matter, because octopuses and squids don't hunt each other. Deep Sea Worm It's almost impossible to see some marine bristle worms, as they are almost completely transparent. However, at least 11 species of these animals can emit bright-colored light, mostly blue. But there's one species of bristle worms with the complicated name Tomaptris nisini, which glows yellow. It's rather unique ability in the animal world. To distract a predator, some individuals of the genus get rid of a part of their body called a parapodia, which are small outgrowths on the worm's body that also emit light. This confuses the predator, which starts chasing parapodia rather than the animal itself. As you can see, there are many amazing invisible animals to be found in the sea abyss. But why don't we go up to the surface? After all, there are some transparent creatures on land that are worth checking out as well. Stay tuned and very soon you'll see the world's most unusual butterfly, a frog organs of which can be seen, and a creature you'll find hard to believe exists. Let's move on. Unlike the marine environment, being transparent on land is much more difficult because light travels faster in the air than through the water column. There's another difficulty as well. Organisms that live on land need pigments, particularly melanin, to protect them from ultraviolet radiation. However, there are exceptions to this rule. One such incredible exception is the glass wing butterfly, Greta Otto, which lives in Central America. Although only its wings are transparent, predators still find it very difficult to track the insect in flight, to understand how transparency is achieved, scientists looked at the wings of the butterfly under an electron microscope. 
they found nanoscale tubercles on their surface, which are randomly arranged and have different lengths. These tiny outgrowths help to minimize the reflection of light from Greta Otto's wings and thus make them invisible. Glass Frog The transparent neighbor of the glass-winged butterfly is the glass frog. These amphibians also inhabit Central America but are also found in South America. They got their name due to the almost transparent skin on the abdomen and chest through which internal organs and bones of the animals can be seen perfectly. As you've already understood on the examples of previous invisible animals, transparency can be called an ideal form of camouflage, but in the case of the glass frog, this isn't quite the case. This trick works mainly underwater, where the peculiarities of light refraction in the liquid help the animal to hide without being found by the visible parts of its internal organs. Nevertheless, even on land, glass frogs are quite good at hiding from predators due to certain features. To understand these features, the researchers photographed 55 glass frogs on green leaves and on a white background. The researchers found that the frogs always looked green but became lighter or darker depending on the background they were on. At the same time, the apparent brightness of the more transparent paws changed more than that of the body. In aggregate, this created the effect of blurring the frog's contours which made them look almost invisible even on land. Transparent Snail Relatively recently, in 2013, a transparent snail was discovered in western Croatia. It's become a new species for science. Scientists named the species Zaspium thalussum. This snail is interesting for several reasons. First, it has a transparent shell, which can become cloudy or milky white in certain conditions. Second, these snails live in one of the deepest caves in the world at a depth of about a kilometer. Third, it's the most stereotypical snail in the world. Most snails would envy the Zospium thalassum species as these snails crawl only a couple of centimeters a day on their own. And fourth, these snails are blind. What? They belong to the subterranean inhabitants, which in the course of evolution have lost their visual orientation and coloring. All in all, the new snail species is truly unique. Golden Tortoise Beetle On the other end of Earth, in southeastern Asia, you can find another amazing creature, the Golden Tortoise Beetle. Such double name is not accidental. It's called a beetle because it actually is a beetle and a tortoise because of its transparent shell-like carapace. This creature is not completely transparent, but it's no less interesting than the previous animals from this episode. Such an unusual carapace deceives potential predators and also protects the beetles from attacks. The transparent outer shell of the carapace reflects light through the layer of liquid between the adjacent layers of the carapace. These beetles can change color depending on the presence of the liquid layer. In case of danger, golden tortoise beetles change their color very quickly, increasing or decreasing the amount of liquid under the upper layers of the carapace. And in conclusion, let's go back to the ocean again. It's worth it because that's where another transparent creature lives. I'm talking about this jellyfish. Apart from the red center, it's almost completely transparent. That probably helps it hide from predators, but maybe this jellyfish doesn't need such a feature. After all, as scientists have found out, this creature is immortal. That's right. Churatopsis dorni jellyfish is indeed immortal. Of course, if it'll be attacked by a predator, then everything will be over for it. But this transparent creature should not worry about death of old age. However, not everything is so simple. These jellyfish have an unlimited life cycle, manifested in unusual processes. The initial stage of development of the organism from fertilized cells is a polyp. The polyp gives birth to the jellyfish, and the latter reproduces and dies. When unfavorable conditions occur, Turidopsis dorni attaches itself to some surface and its cells transform and return to the so-called baby stage. Then the polyp gives birth to the jellyfish again and the cycle repeats. Theoretically, this cycle can last eternally, which gives us all the right to call this transparent creature immortal. And now let's take a look at the larger unique creatures. Sharks Zebra Shark Judging by the pattern on the body, the zebra shark would be called the leopard shark. But they shouldn't be confused, there are two different species – the zebra shark and the leopard cat shark. Moreover, the zebra shark is considered a rarer shark. It lives in the Indian Ocean, in the Western Pacific, and in the Red Sea. This species of shark prefers to live in tropical waters at shallow depth near reefs, 
where these creatures catch crabs, small fish, sea urchins, and snails. The zebra shark is interesting not only because of the unusual pattern on its body, but also because of its special way of reproduction. In the absence of appropriate mates, zebra sharks are able to reproduce through parthenogenesis, also known as virgin conception or virgin reproduction. History knows of cases when a zebra shark was able to lay eggs from which three baby sharks then hatched. This despite the fact that the shark had no contact with the males for three years before giving birth. Scientists still can't figure out all the mechanisms of such conception. Whale Shark Surprised to see a whale shark in this episode? I'm sure it came as a surprise to many of you because whale sharks are quite famous. They're famous for being the largest sharks in the entire world as well as the largest species of modern fish. These giants often grow up to 12 meters in length, although they can grow to the full 20 meters in length. They also weigh a lot. Their weight is often up to 30 to 35 tons. Not surprisingly, these sharks are called whale sharks because in size they're not much inferior to whales, and they're similar to them in terms of nutrition. Whale sharks are one of the few sharks that are not a danger to humans. They're not predators and feed on plankton. But beyond all that, whale sharks are also interesting for their population. There's evidence that there are only about a thousand whale sharks left in the entire Earth. If this information is correct, then the whale shark is one of the rarest fish in the world in general and is on the brink of extinction. Frilled Shark As for the frilled shark, science says that this species is of the least concern. At the same time, the frilled shark can be included in the list of the rarest sharks on the planet. The thing is that the frilled shark lives at great depth, so scientists haven't yet been able to fully study the species and learn all its secrets. What is there to talk about if the first observations of the frilled sharks in natural conditions took place only in 2004? But in general, the frilled sharks are very interesting creatures. Researchers call them living fossils because of their primitive features. This can be seen in the appearance of the shark. The frilled shark does not even quite look like a shark. More precisely, it looks like prehistoric sharks and a mixture of modern eels, sea snakes, and sharks at the same time. This species is interesting not only because of this, but also because of its unusual hunting. This two-meter-long shark hunts like a snake, bending its body and making a lunge forward. Its long and mobile jaws allow it to swallow a large prey whole, and numerous rows of small and sharp teeth prevent its prey from escaping. Goblin Shark The situation is similar with the goblin shark. Despite the fact that the species is classified as least concern, Scientists claim that the goblin shark is one of the rarest in the entire world. The biological process of the goblin shark are very poorly studied. It's not even known how numerous this species is. But scientists do know something. The goblin shark received such a sonorous name due to its appearance. It has a frightening snout with a beak-like growth, protruding long jaws, sharp teeth, translucent skin, and a pinkish color. As you can see, nature did its best. Fortunately, the encounter with this shark is almost completely excluded because the species lives at great depth of 200 meters and more. For this reason, scientists have never been able to properly study goblin sharks. Speartooth Shark The next shark was luckier with the name. However, this species situation is not as good in population as it is in the name. The Speartooth Shark is a very rare species of the Requiem Sharks family. At present, scientists have access only to young of this species, found in the intertidal zones at the mouths of the major rivers of northern Australia and New Guinea. The species is found only in fast-moving, turbid waters with different salinity levels. The spear-toothed shark is burly. It has a broad snout and small eyes. It grows up to three meters in length. These sharks feed on bottom fish and crustaceans. One of the main features of this shark is the ability to perfectly hunt almost in complete darkness. Unfortunately, nowadays there are fewer and fewer of these unusual sharks in the world, and all because of the mass catching and destruction of habitat. Scientists estimate that there are no more than 2,500 of these sharks left in the world, although the real situation is probably even sadder. Now I'll tell you about an animal from Africa that frightened all scientists. What is that? Animals in Africa, however strange they may be, are known to science and many explorers in general. 
but this one creature, discovered by travelers, has set a whole world on edge. What do you think it is? That's right, I have no idea either. On the one hand, this monster reminds me of a dog. On the other hand, it looks like an ancient dragon breathing flames. It even seems that it's not something earthly at all and came to us from somewhere from another planet. What version do you like better? And do you think that this find was really discovered? Share your thoughts in the comments. It'll be interesting to read. A copy. But this creature is much more real and it doesn't raise any questions. Although I was wrong saying about questions actually, the Okapi is a species of ungulates, the only representative of its genus from the Giraffidae family. In fact, it's an African unicorn, which simultaneously resembles a horse, a giraffe, and a zebra. Such a miracle of nature usually weighs no more than 550 pounds, and its body length is 6.5 feet. The Okapi is closest to giraffes, but you'll not see any long neck in it. The fact is that nature has considered that there is simply no need for it. This mutant is found deep in the rainforest of the Congo and eats mainly bushy vegetation along with leaves of stunted trees. But what Mother Nature didn't save on was the length of its tongue. In the Okapi, it can reach more than 16 inches. There are some of the few creatures that can lick not only their nose but even their own eyes with their tongue if they want to. And now imagine that all this news is not heard by us, people from the 21st century, but by scientists from the 1900s who thought they knew everything about nature. But then this miracle appeared in front of them. To say that the researchers were scared is an understatement. Fennec. Remember this combination of six letters, because from now on it will become for you one of the most pleasant and sweet in memory. The fennec is an inhabitant of the harsh deserts of North Africa that feels great there, despite its small size and cute appearance. In relation to the size of the head, the ears of this animal are the largest among predators. And these are not just ears, but full-fledged radiators, which give heat into the atmosphere and thus cool their owner. At the same time, the fennec weighs only about 2.2 pounds. What is this if not another example of the fact that you should never underestimate a creature because of its appearance? The beautiful ears of the world's smallest fox, in addition to being heat exchangers, also help its owner to listen to the quietest sounds in the surroundings. The fennec can even hear things underground. Knowing where a desert bird is silently strolling or where a sand lizard is going to emerge from any minute, the fox hunts easily and gets its food successfully. In addition to great hearing, this animal is also able to jump more than 27 and a half inches high and almost 5 feet long. And I remind you, his dimensions are quite modest. In addition to having a close-knit family, fennec foxes also join together in large social groups. The foxes enjoy each other's company. Animals play and have fun together like little kids. These foxes have perfectly adapted to the conditions of life in the desert. But today, it's increasingly possible to encounter fennec in a private house or even in a city apartment, which I'm not even surprised at all. The next African creature that scientists have discovered is the elephant shrew. These are mammals from the family of… guess which one? That's right, from the elephant shrew family. They have a large head, a trunk-shaped elongated nose, as well as slender limbs and a long tail. The animals run fast and jump high. In fact, if a person knows nature badly, they can confuse this unique creature with an ordinary gerboa from afar. Why not? It also has elongated rounded ears, expressive beady eyes, and thin but strong legs. By the way, the animals use the latter very actively. It's not for nothing that they're also called jumping shrews. It's a good thing at least that people didn't start to attribute these shrews to mice, but their lifestyle is very similar to them. And this despite the fact that there are no rodent genes in the blood of jumping shrews. They are constantly digging somewhere, walking only where they paved the way before, and also hiding in burrows. Interestingly, along with this, elephant shrews are also considered real predators. A convenient and sophisticated trunk helps them in hunting. Their potential prey is usually insects, spiders, or termites. Elephant shrews use a movable trunk stuffed with sensitive vibrasi. This flexible appendage, like a locator, detects a suitable target, after which it immediately goes into the mouth. 
Lesser bush baby. I would call these primates another dose of cuteness from Africa. Speaking of this continent, lesser bush babies are considered to be one of the most numerous primates there. Yes, they're the most numerous and we still don't know anything about them, but that's okay. One scientist encountered these amazing creatures for the first time, which immediately formed in their head dozens if not hundreds of questions. Moreover, I would really like to look at the face of the scientists of bygone years because they definitely discovered the lesser bush baby somewhere at night. You won't find these mischievous primates during the day. These furry friends are also known for making everything and everyone wet. Urine therapy is the ideology of these little primates. They irrigate themselves and their females with their liquid secretions. Of course, their territory is also hit with such napalm. They also often wet their own legs. And since their secretions retain the smell for a long time, it means that everything they touch is considered their native place from the same second. Thus, they mark their territory. However, don't think this is a sloppy animal, which is disgusting to touch. It's quite the opposite. They have a nursing claw on their front legs. It replaces a comb and helps the primates groom their hair. Besides, they have their own toothbrush under their tongue. The cartilaginous comb helps them clean off any food debris from their teeth that may have gotten stuck during dinner. Shoebill And this is one of the most unusual storks I've ever seen. All right, let's be correct, though. The shoebill used to be classified as a stork because of its general body shape. Genetically, however, it's similar to pelicans and herons. Again, it's even hard to imagine exactly how scientists reacted to this creature when they saw it for the first time. After all, this four-foot-tall bird simply has a gigantic and one-of-a-kind beak. Not surprisingly, it's the first thing that catches the eye at all. The beak can exceed eight inches in length, and its width is often equal to that of the shoebill itself. With this thing, the bird deftly catches fish, amphibians, snakes, and even small crocodiles. People mockingly compare the bird's beak to a wooden shoe, hence the name of the bird. However, this shoe can break the shell of a turtle. So that skull of jokers, if the birds find out about it, will crack without difficulty. But it's not likely they'll ever hear the joke. No one will ever tell it to them. Shoebills usually live alone. They choose to live alone because it's much easier to camouflage in tall grass. Because of this, shoebills can sometimes stand motionless for hours to hunt successfully. It's time for mysticism. And first of all, I want to tell you about Kangamato. Kangamato is a legendary creature or cryptid that, according to local lore, lives in South Africa especially in the Mabongo region of Zambia. Kangamato is described as a large bird or flying reptile with bat-like wings and sharp teeth. It's often compared to such ancient lizards as pterodactyls. There are several witness accounts of Kangamato encounters. Eyewitnesses claim that the creature attacks cattle and sometimes it even attacks people. Some claim to have seen Kangamato leaving caves or flying over rivers and lakes. However, I was most impressed with this video in which a certain bird in Africa flies over the blue sky nonchalantly. The video was repeatedly checked for editing, but they couldn't find any traces of editing. There are two versions here. According to one, this is some kind of dinosaur that survived to this day. According to another, we see Kangamato, the legendary creature. I don't even know which of these is better. Makala Mbembe is another legendary cryptid that, according to stories and local lore, lives in the wilds of Central Africa, especially in the Congo River region. Descriptions of Makala Mbembe vary, but it's generally believed to be a huge creature like a dinosaur or a dragon, with a long neck, large torso, and strong hind legs. Locals claim that Makala Mbembe can reach a length of 50 feet and have a skin covered with very solid scales. What's interesting is that there are a number of eyewitness reports of encounters with this monster, and they all seem quite plausible. Eyewitnesses claim to have seen it in the water as it crosses rivers or floats to the surface while emitting a kind of roar. From mythical creatures, let's move on to real monsters that actually existed on our planet. Over tens and hundreds of millions of years, a great number of dangerous creatures have lived in the ocean, but hardly any of them could compete with Megalodon, the most famous prehistoric shark. 
as well as the most dangerous and aggressive shark of all time. Megalodon could grow up to 66 feet long and weigh almost 50 tons. Modern predatory sharks are not even close to such a monster. For example, great white sharks rarely exceed 20 to 23 feet in length and weigh about 1 to 2 tons. In addition to incredible size, Megalodons had incredible teeth. It's for this that the shark got its name, which in Greek means big tooth. The Megalodon teeth reached about 8 inches in length. That's one of the most significant figures of all time. 276 such teeth, arranged in five rows, combined with the shark's huge size, its heightened predatory instincts and fierce aggression, made Megalodon a real monster, which could now easily deal with any other predatory shark. Speaking of them, there are plenty of creepy monsters in the ocean these days, too. And the bull shark stands out among them. Most likely, Megalodon would finish it off, but the bull shark could try to fight back. In addition, this shark is not inferior to Megalodon in everything. Unlike the prehistoric monster, the bull shark can swim in fresh water, so it can be seen in many rivers. Megalodon would be proud of its distant descendant because the bull shark is also aggression and power in the flesh. Echinoderms and crustaceans, rays and dolphins, sea turtles and sea snakes, and of course humans, this predator doesn't care who's in its path, it'll kill anyone. Only orcas, because they're superior in size, and humans, if we're talking about hunting and fishing, can fight back the bull shark. Any other creature will fall prey and be eaten by the ruthless predator. Varambe Dangerous and large creatures are found not only in the sea, although there are usually more of them in the water. There are some creepy creatures on land as well. It's a good thing that some of them are already extinct, like Varambe. Just imagine if this bird still inhabited the planet. Scientists believe that Varambe were the heaviest and largest birds of all time, which automatically makes them very dangerous. Modern ostriches would seem tiny compared to them, because Varambe grew up to 10 feet in length and weighed up to 1,760 pounds. The largest were representatives of the Varambe Titan species. Because of their enormous size, Varambe were unable to fly, so they wandered through the fields and forests of Madagascar. Zoologists have made 3D models of the brain of these birds and found that Varambe could not see well and led a nocturnal lifestyle, dwelling mostly in dark forests. They apparently fed on fruit, seeds, leaves, and insects, so they cannot be called the most dangerous birds in history. But the following feathered creatures can be… Terror birds. Yeah, that's their name. They also have another name, Forish Hasidae. They lived long before Varambe. They went extinct about two million years ago, but if these overgrown birds had coexisted together, Madagascar's birds would have a hard time. Terror birds would have quickly killed them before they were huge and frightening predators. Terror birds reached up to 10 feet in height, had a long neck, a powerful beak, and sharp claws. Despite their enormous size, terror birds were capable of speeding up to 30 miles per hour. Paleontologists believe that the terror birds first caught up with their prey, wounded it with their claws on their feet, and then delivered a fatal blow to the head with their beak. When hunting large prey, terror birds attacked it with their claws and beak and hit its vital organs. If we compare terror birds to the modern dangerous birds such as golden eagles, peregrine falcons, and bald eagles, the modern birds are inferior to the terrible birds. They don't stand a chance in a fight with the prehistoric giants. The only thing they could count on was to retreat from the battlefield and escape from the fast terror bird. Since I'm talking about extreme antiquity, why not take a look at dinosaurs? By default, we think of these lizards as some of the most dangerous creatures of all time, but no two dinosaurs were alike. Some were quite harmless and small, while others were real monsters. And the most dangerous of them was not the notorious Tyrannosaurus, but Giganotosaurus. The 43-foot-long predatory lizard, weighing in at about 8 tons, held the inhabitants of the Cretaceous period in the history of modern Argentina at bay. It didn't eat Tyrannosaurus, T-Rex simply lived much later, but if they had coexisted, Tyrannosaurus would have regularly fallen prey to Giganotosaurus. This makes sense because if Giganotosaurus could even kill 98-feet-long Titanosaur, then 39-foot-long T-Rex would be an easy meal for it. But even such a super predator as Giganotosaurus can be dealt with. For example, Dinosuchus could do it. It was a huge and very dangerous crocodile, but it lived later, 80 to 73 million years ago. 
If Dinosuchus lived at the same time as Giganotosaurus, it wouldn't have given it any peace, because this gigantic crocodile easily hunted even the largest dinosaurs. In this, it was helped by two factors. First, Dinosuchus was a colossal crocodile. It grew up to 40 feet in length and weighed over 8 tons. Secondly, scientists believe that it was Dinosuchus that had the greatest bite force of any animal in history. It exceeds 356,000 newtons. For comparison, in Tyrannosaurus, this indicator is about 10 times less, and in Megalodon, it's three times less. Not surprisingly, Dinosuchus could bite through even the thickest shells and most protected scales and skin of its rivals. Its distant descendant, the modern saltwater crocodile, which is considered the most biting creature at the moment, looks like a toothless toddler in comparison with the monstrous Dinosuchus. Speaking of the saltwater crocodile, scientists believe that it's now not only the owner of the most powerful bite among animals, but also the largest terrestrial predator. This title is often assigned to another dangerous giant, the polar bear. Whereas saltwater crocodiles grow up to 17, 20, or even 23 feet in length, polar bears rarely exceed 10 feet in length and usually weigh up to 1,760 pounds. But even that's more than enough to be the most dangerous creature in the entire Arctic. Scientists believe that polar bears are the only bears that see humans as prey. While brown bears and black bears may not notice a human nearby, polar bears are more likely to attack. They're also dangerous for the inhabitants of the Arctic, which they hunt. Common seals, eared seals, hares, moose, musk oxen, and even walruses, the polar bear is able to deal with any of them. This creature is very powerful. Saw-scaled viper when it comes to dangerous snakes, we usually think of the black mamba, the rattlesnake, or the king cobra. But scientists believe that the saw-scaled viper is more dangerous than all of them. It may not be as fast as the black mamba, not as big as the king cobra, and not the most venomous in the world, but it is the deadliest one. According to statistics, it's from the bites of saw-scaled vipers that the most people in the world die every year. When encountering a human, the saw-scaled viper makes its presence felt with a loud rustling sound which it makes by rubbing its jagged rings. If the person doesn't leave, the saw-scaled viper attacks. The bite is extremely painful and in most cases is fatal. Its venom contains extremely powerful toxins, which have a specific effect on the entire blood-forming process in the human body. They cause a very dramatic decrease in the level of fibrinogen, the protein that's responsible for the clotting rate, which means that the victim simply can't stop bleeding. Sea wasp. Let's go back to the sea for a while. Nowadays, you can't find a creepy megalodon or dinosuchus lurking near the shore, but you can come across a sea wasp. This is not some special insect, as you might think, but a beautiful jellyfish. But don't let this beauty fool you, because the sea wasp belongs to the box jellyfish class, which is extremely venomous. Experts believe that the sea wasp is the most dangerous box jellyfish of all. Its tentacles are covered with stinging cells, which contain one of the most powerful venoms on the planet. The toxin is enough to kill 60 people in just three minutes. An encounter with even one sea wasp can be fatal, and if a person or other creature finds themselves in a group of these venomous monsters, there's no chance for survival. Contact with the tentacles simultaneously affects the nervous system, heart, and skin. Because of this, death after a sea wasp burn can occur more quickly than after a bite from a highly venomous snake, spider, or scorpion. Death Stalker Speaking of scorpions, the bigger the scorpion, the safer it is. And this is proved by the final animal of this episode, the Palestine Yellow Scorpion. It's between one and four and a half inches in length. Not much, right? But this little guy is called the Death Stalker, and this is alarming. The fact is that this particular arthropod is often called the deadliest scorpion on the planet and one of the most dangerous creatures. It's even listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most venomous scorpion in the world. The Death Stalker is widespread in North Africa, Turkey, and the Arabian Peninsula, where it can be seen in crevices and dry areas. Because of the terrain and coloration of the Palestine Yellow Scorpion, it can be overlooked and accidentally stepped on. In this case, it stings very painfully. Ah! Jeez, yeah, he got me. And the consequences can be devastating. From anaphylactic shock to pulmonary edema and death, the Death Stalker has no trouble with animals, especially small ones. Fortunately, humans are more difficult to kill, but it's possible, so it's definitely not worth messing with. 
That's all, guys. Which animal do you personally consider to be the most dangerous in history? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.